Hey everyone, it's Raychan back with another voiceover, tutorial, helpful hints, whatever you like to call this series. A friend of mine asked me if I can go a bit more into detail with color theory and particularly how color and light affects a particular object, so I thought I would go over that today. Now the color cooler challenge is where you go to colorcooler.com and you would insert your account username and they would generate a color palette for you that would represent your whole gallery. Now I found this helpful because this allows you to look at your gallery at a glance to see if it's consistent in color and if everything harmonized, which happens to be helpful if you want to grow on the Instagram algorithm. The challenge itself is to take these colors and to turn it into a whole new illustration using nothing but these colors. Now I finished on the challenge a little bit because I used this particular orange which happened to be lighter in hue rather than this one. And I also used a little bit of white as well in order to create this piece. So today I thought I would show you the end product rather than showing you the process because I thought it would be more efficient and helpful to just show you the general image and discuss some of the fundamentals that way instead of constantly pausing through the speed paint and trying to voice my thoughts. Speaking of speed paints, I have compiled the footage and put it into a speed paint in this very video. If you'd like to watch the speed paint, you can skip over to this timeline right here. So for this illustration, the main thing that I want to talk about are the references. I think that they will help me demonstrate a couple of the fundamentals a little bit better. Now I have a couple of references here, and my first one is this image right here, which shows two very prominent light sources. I found this image off of Google and through Tanai I discovered that it was from Reddit. I'm not entirely sure where else it came from, but if you know who created this piece then let me know so I can credit the artist. The second reference that I got, which I used primarily, was this one which was from Crystal Rain 2702 on DeviantArt. And this particular image, especially this piece right here, helped me a lot when it came to deciding what I should do with the light source. Now I'm going to start with this reference here and talk about it a little bit. Now as you can see on the side that there is a diagram where it shows the person being represented by a spear as well as the two sources of light, where they are and what they are doing to the object in question. Now light fundamentally is particles that move in waves and it also moves in a straight line. Now. Because it moves in a straight line, that means that the light source will only affect any surface areas that comes directly into contact with it. So to demonstrate that, as you can see here, this light, as it's on, placed on both sides of this person, only affects the side of the hair, the side of the temples, and the cheeks, the sides of the nose, and the tendons of the neck. Now, one thing I want to note that may seem very very obvious is that this character right here, his skin color is not a green. His skin color is a very tan dark color. The reason why I wanted to point that out is because something happens when you have a light source that is colored. When you have a light source that is tinted, whatever your object is will also become tinted and as you can see here the sides of the temple and his face suddenly become very green in color you can see here also on this example right here where the light source is blue therefore his face becomes blue now things become a little bit more complicated when you have something that is very see-through or something that is reflective like for example the ears of a human face, or the leaves of a tree, waves on the ocean, or crystal, diamond, glasses, those things are a little bit different. They fundamentally work on the same principles, but there's a couple more extra steps. But going back to this image, the main thing that I want you to take away is that light moves in a straight line, thus it will only affect the surface areas that are directly in front of it. So moving on to the second lighting reference, we see the same thing happening. Now we don't really see where the light source is coming from, but we can sense it because of this prominent, prominent blue light color that is affecting the forehead. Not only the forehead, but the eyelid, the bridge of the nose, tip of the lip, the chin, all of these things are very much affected because of this blue light. 
You can see the same thing happening here with this yellow light on the side. Another thing that you can take away is that this portion of hair right here is not affected by the light. And what that cues to us as the viewer means that this portion of hair is behind this strand of hair right here. Now while these things may seem overly obvious, they might not they may be a little bit more difficult to apply in real time when you're drawing your illustrations. So that's the first two things that I want you to take note. That whatever your light source color is, that will affect the color of your object. And also the light source will only affect objects that are directly in its way. Now, one thing that can really help with your light source and whenever you color your paintings is anatomy. And this is just something that will come along with time and practice. So you see here this image that I also took off of Google. Um, it's a very low poly render of the human face. And it can give you a very, very straightforward explanation of where the light's going to hit. For example, if I had this pink light right here, and I'm going to use this picture right here. If this was my light source, then you can guess that only this part would be colored, this part would be colored, maybe a little bit of this part, but not quite this one. Maybe just a little bit of that part. Same with this side, maybe a little bit of this side, but th those are the areas that will be affected. Let's also not forget the nose. Those are the main areas that will be affected. Now, now that I have spoken about all of that, let's take a look at my piece. Now you'll see that what I meant before, that even though I consciously know all of these fundamentals, I don't always put them into practice Particularly when I'm rendering all of these on autopilot and I have a music playing in the background I don't always keep the logic of lighting consistent in my paintings So the main thing that you can tell here is we can study the face and I've already made things a lot more difficult for myself By having three light sources. I use this very bright white light I have this pink light source and I have this orange light source and as much as I like the overall effect I do admit that it made things a lot more complicated and things are not quite consistent. So you can see here that the bottom edge of my jaw has this pink light source. Now, if I were to keep consistent, that would also mean that this portion of my nose should also have been lighted rather than the bridge of my nose. Another inconsistency that I see right off the bat is that the side of my jaw has this very white light. But over here on this kitty pattern on the headpiece, you see that it's illuminated on the far end rather than right here. If I were to keep this consistent, then I would use this white light and put it on this side, keeping it consistent with the direction of the light source. So as you can see here, there's a couple of mistakes. If you look at your arm, obviously your arm is more of a cylinder shape. So instead of having this very weird rim light going on right here, if I were to correct this now, then I would give it more of a gradient, like so. So those are a couple of mistakes. I wanted also to point out one common mistake that I remember hearing from another channel, so this is not really my original idea, this is not an observation that I made before, but I thought it would be helpful to repeat it here because for the life of me, I cannot find that video. And I thought, it's a very helpful tip. So here I'm going to paint a common object and I'm going to have my light source. Now according to that video, one very common mistake that artists make whenever they are doing the lighting or the colored lighting of a particular piece is they would use this light source color and they would color the object but for some reason they think that the more intense the light source is the closer it is to the object all of a sudden the light source becomes very very white now that's not actually the case as you've seen in all these other lighting references Colored light does not turn white, no matter how strong it becomes. It always creates, it always makes the object the color of the light source. So that's one quick, common 
mispractice I wanted to mention to you guys. While I'm talking about a common mispractice is I just wanted to point out that a common mistake on my part is not designating a light source. As you'll see later in the speed paint, that this white light that I have right here, I didn't establish where it was coming from. I didn't establish where any of the light source it was coming from. I later on decided that I would make the white light come from the phone right here, which is fine, but it kind of confuses where this white light from the sweater is coming from. So there are my thoughts, there are my tips, and I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more suggestions or topics that you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video, but for now, enjoy the speed paint. Thank you.